Hello, my name is James Randy. I want to congratulate my good friend Richard Saunders on over 500 episodes of the Skeptic Zone podcast. I've been on there many times, and over the last 10 years, it, it's been a good adventure, I must say. Thank you, Richard. We need more of you. Go. Welcome to the Skeptic Zone, the podcast from Australia for science and reason. Here are your hosts, Richard Saunders and Stefan Soika. Richard, Richard, Richard. Hey, well, Stephen. Welcome. Well, welcome back to me, actually. You're welcome here, back to you. You're here all the time, but I'm, I'm here uh, quite rarely these days, and it's great to be here. Yeah, back on the Skeptic Zone, especially for this episode. Huh? Oh, I think there's a very, very special reason for being here tonight, and, um, and, and I think you might have to explain exactly why I'm here. What episode is it? 500. What? The 500th episode? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That is unbelievable. I mean, just think, when we first started, like we, we, our language hadn't even evolved into modern English. Uh -huh. we, we, yeah, remember the first episode we did, uh, the intro went something like, Several sickle elom gidlan. He halford sickle elom gidlan. Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. How long ago? That was when we started, our first episode, 500 episodes ago. And then we had the Napoleonic <laughs> Wars, then we had like the Romantic era, the classical era, even Bach, Beethoven, the but whole 500 thing. 500 weeks. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, really? Oh, gosh. It seems like it's, 500 years. It, Richard, I was completely convinced that I've been doing this for 500 years. <laughs> but uh, 500 episodes, 500 Five, weeks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness gracious me. Well, congratulations. Even Thanks. that seems like a long time. It, 500 episodes is a long time. No matter how many, how you space them apart, even if you did do it every day, 500 is, is a big number. Wow. It is. Wow. I mean, probably things even have evolved in that space of time as well. I mean, our language. Which certainly has with all the selfies and all the other. Well, over the last terms. ten years, there's going to be some microbes that have evolved. Now, <laughs> listeners happy. might hear a bit of background noise. We're not in the Skeptic Zone studios. Yeah. We're actually in the alcove. Yep. That used to be the Chinese restaurant. Oh yeah. Where listeners, long-time listeners, will remember we used to record the Think Tank. Yeah, it's did. now meeting rooms, but there are some armchairs here, and we're sitting exactly where we did when we had the big table five hundred episodes ago. Five hundred episodes ago. What years? Okay. And a bit later on. Um, there's a whole gang of people from the past and the present going to come down here and we're going to do a think tank. Oh, awesome. Yeah, oh, a bit later be, on in this episode. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Unfortunately, I don't think I could be there for that because um, now that I'm 500 episodes older, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of medical conditions that I need yeah, to sort out. Gonna... I'm getting some alternative therapy. So tonight I think I've got a Reiki session oh, good, uh, yes, that I have yes. to get to and a little bit of ear candling. But uh, but I will. Uh, hopefully I'll be back for the, for the outro. Oh, you'll be back for the <laughs> outro. Of course you will. So what? I've made 500. Five I know, I know, all the people that we've interviewed oh. over the years, all the places the Skeptic Zone has been to, around all the, the reports around the world, it's it's staggering. It, you, I mean, it, it's an amazing achievement for, for you personally because you've actually produced every I, single one of I them. I sit there in the Skeptic Zone it, studios and, and drag the mouse over every, it, every episode. There's been no substitute producer but Richard Saunders. Yeah. And, uh, and, and just think of all the, really, how far the movement has come in that time. Like, for in, you know, in that, how many years is something like 10? Odd years. Ten years, more, yeah, more, yeah. More, uh, just maybe. about. Ten. Well, it's interesting because you and I were doing skeptical podcasts and video casts yes. and things before this show. Yeah, before the show. And even oh. way back to when you were on Net FM in 2000 2000, 2001, yeah. we were doing skeptical wow. stuff. Wow, so just the zone's been going for Just the zone's been going for 10 years. But coming up. Yes, tell, tell apart, us what's coming. Apart from the think tank, coming up on this week's episode. We have a report about the Australian Skeptics Vaccination Clinic, which is in a couple of days' time as we're recording. Oh. But by the time the show goes out, of course, it'll be in right. the a past. Right, a vaccination clinic. Yeah, we're, uh, the Australian Skeptics are having a flu jab day. Oh, fantastic. And giving the flu vaccination is none other than Dr Brad Mackay from Embarrassing Bodies Down Under. Well, that yeah. is a bit of a celebrity. Are you not going to have, like, people picketing outside going, how dare you, you're all going to get autism? I don't know. 
But it could. But it could. There's scuttlebutt there might be some protesters Oh, there. really? We'll find out. We'll all find out. We'll all find out. Nothing like a bit of political protest to, uh, to, to hype things. All the best for us. Yeah, any attention's good I attention. Hope, I hope so. <laughs> and also along the way in this week's episode, as you would have heard just at the beginning, a greeting from James Randi, which is really oh, nice. Oh, yes. A special nice. greeting from him. But throughout the rest of this episode, it's going to be interspersed with greetings from people from all around the world, which is really nice. Celebratory greetings. Yes, Congra- celebratory greetings from celebrities <laughs> and and congratulatory as well yeah because 500 episodes it's a real it's almost an eon in the skeptical movement yes. when, you, when you think about it when you, but you think of how much the the digital media has taken over and and allowed this kind of thinking and this kind mm. of movement to 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 promote itself and it's actually you've had some big wins over the last 500 episodes haven't you like well yes i mean we've broken a lot of news uh the skeptical movement in australia has had a lot of wins i think that the top that we're most proud of over all these years of the, is our continual fight against the anti-vaxxers. That's yeah. probably the biggest thing with Dr. Rachie and now, yep. uh, and more recently, Heidi Robertson from the Northern Rivers Vaccination supporters. Mm-hmm. So, but too but, too many highlights to remember. But, but, yeah, I guess we'll talk about it later as well. But uh, yeah, the things like the the homeopathy and pharmacies that's been a, a, yeah. a high profile one, and a lot of the other, basically a lot of the pseudo medical things that that are quite rife in Australia. Still, that, yeah, we've had a hand in in uh, in, in in exposing. Oh, the change things have been changing dramatically since we f- did the first episode. Yeah, and, and, and listeners, listen, as well. listeners might want to listen to the first episode. It's quite something. <laughs> that's right. Well, actually, if you, what I thought I would do. Is probably is I'm going to listen to one episode every Christmas <laughs> for, the, for the next 500 years. I think that'll be great. <laughs> I wish you luck, mate. I wish you luck. So, well, and anything else coming up, or we're we just going to get straight into That's it. That's it. I think you know what we're going to. You and I. Yeah. We're going to run upstairs. Oh yes, yes. We're we're gonna, gonna, yes. And join the others who are waiting up there. We're going to have some uh, some burgers and fries and chips and lollies and, and drinks yeah, and yeah. I don't know what. And, and, and the rest time. of us are going to come down here and continue with the think tank. But for now. Awesome. Uh, everybody, welcome to show 500. 500. Unbelievable. I'm standing outside the uh, East Sydney Doctors Clinic here. Hi, Josh. Josh from the Sand Skeptics. Richard, how are you going? I'm going well. And we're here for the uh, vaccination, uh, the flu jab, flu vaccination afternoon. And I can see some more sceptics walking across. Oh, look, they look right. like the Beatles, don't they? Just walking across this crosswalk over there. Take well, the cover I mean, of road. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if the Beatles were mostly female. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes Trish and Lara from the, the committee, all ready to have their vaccinations. It's a wonderful, glorious, sunny day here in Sydney. It's really nice. As the buses go by and the cars go by. Hi, Lara. Hello, everybody. Here for your flu vaccination. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. (laughs) And uh, joining us, too, is Trish Hannon. What a wonderful shirt you have, Trish. Oh, thanks. Nice tie. Oh, thank you. You like my tie. (laughs) I've got a medical tie on with um, syringes and pills and stethoscopes but you've got skeleton hands yes on your shirt that looks very that's that's quite a striking shirt oh well we're outside the clinic at the moment oh i see lara's hoeing into the uh what are these british vanilla flavored god save the queen french fancies oh they look great i think i'll save one until after i get my uh flu vaccination (laughs) and uh well why don't we uh enter the clinic now yes Walking up the uh, passageway here into the East Sydney Doctors. <laughs> Round the corner. <laughs> into the waiting room we go. And I'm just passing Brad Mackay, who's busily eating. So we won't disturb him at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, Skeptic Zone reporter and uh, president of the Australian Skeptics, Aran Sagev. Hi, Aran. Hello, Richard. This is an interesting uh, ad- adventure or venture the Australian skeptics are trying, and uh, I think it's worthwhile. I'm going to get my flu jab anyway. Yeah, I, I was going to. I uh, delayed it by a bit because uh, the advice was to wait a little bit, and uh, obviously it co- coincided quite well with our planned dates. <laughs> yeah, Tom, my son, is uh, asthmatic, so he definitely gets it every year. So it's a good opportunity, and it's a good opportunity to send a message to yes. the community that uh, vaccines are a safe and uh, healthy yeah. thing to do. I absolutely agree. And if we front up and show that we are actually here, 
to get our flu vaccination, it shows that we put our money where our mouth is, so to speak. Yeah, well, we yeah. put our arms where our we're mouth putting is. Our, <laughs> and we're putting our lives in the hands of Dr. Brad. Hi, Dr. Brad. Hello. I'll have the adrenaline waiting in case there's an anaphylactic reaction, now, but I'm must, sure we'll be fine. I must congratulate you on your recent TV appearances on Stan Grant's show. Yes. Which yeah. is, uh, for listeners who might not know, that's called... Um, Matter of fact. Thank you, man. I couldn't think of the name. But it's it's broadly an Indigenous affairs show. Am I correct in saying that? Or no. is it more broader than that? Stan Grant is an Indigenous reporter, so yeah. he's a journalist. So he, But he does all sorts of issues. So we were talking previously with um, Richard Dawkins. He was on the show right, course, uh, just yes. uh, recently. Yes. So um, talking about rituals and how we don't need religion. So that was, uh, that was quite good. <laughs> you, um, you shocked me. Richard Dawkins talking about that. I know. That. I, I know, think right? it shocked Stan Grant. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, he's Still, he's still catching up with Richard Dawkins' uh, But you, you did a wonderful quotes. turn the other night uh, speaking about homeopathy, and mm. I thought you had all the facts at your fingertips. That you Really, you did your homework. Well, we were disappointed with the review, so the government decided not to act on the on their independent review on homeopathy and, and on the pharmaceutical industry, and they've just decided, yeah, no, we'll just leave it to the pharmacies, um, the, the pharmacists themselves, to decide whether they stock homeopathy or not. So, yeah, it, it, it's still fleecing people. People. It's taking their money. It's giving them um, magic pills yeah. that um, that don't do anything. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a disappointment. So we will it's see what road. happens. It's a long road. I mean, yeah. we are, I mean, in the, as far as homeopathy going, we are doing well by and large. Yeah, we are getting there. Yeah, getting but there. I'm, I'm. We're following the the UK. They seem to be uh, kicking a few more goals than us at the we're moment. Doing very well. We'll, we'll catch Whoa, up. Oh, now hello. What's this, Trish? you 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 you've just brought out a red syringe. It looks. I also have Interesting. non-red syringes. I'm sure it's full of blood. Yes. What's, what's it's plasma? Yeah. Yes. It, it, does, it does look like blood. Can you explain what's going on here? Well, as you can see, we have <gasps> several muffins. Several? It's a table full of muffins, folks. Unless Chocolate I can't ones. do maths, which there is a very real possibility, there should be 40. Ooh. And there are 40 of these. Describe them, Richard. They're, they're real syringes, folks. They're quite big ones, but they're filled with... Strawberry and caramel. Ah, not blood after not all. Blood not blood after, after all. It looks fantastic. And the muffins, folks, I wish you could be here to look at this, the table of muffins. Oh, now, Trisha's just stuck a syringe into a muffin. Another syringe goes into the chocolate muffin. I've never seen anything like this, folks. I must take a photograph. <laughs> well, if nothing else, this is a creative day, I must say. So, yeah, thanks for coming along. Um, but we will get started with vaccinations very soon. Um, they, we have lots of vaccinated muffins at the front here. So, um, so after you've got to earn your award, though. So, uh, so after we've vaccinated you, please uh, feel free. As long as you're not allergic to muffins, then that'll be all right. Um, <laughs> If you can fill out the the forms that are around, mainly just the top bit, um, like Medicare details if you've got them, and like date of birth name, um, and come up and then I'll just ask you a few questions and make sure that we're all really ready to go, make sure that there's no major allergies or any other problems. Um, we've got lots of vaccines here. Um, there's been a shortage around Australia at the moment, but we've got we've got plenty at the clinic here today, so that's all good. Um, yeah, if there's any questions, please ask me before I'm vaccinating you to make sure that we're all clear. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for supporting um, community immunity in Australia and uh, particularly around Sydney where we are here. So just really, really important, both for yourself and for your family members too. Um, and the big question is, who wants to go first? <laughs> Richard has decided that. Well, my cool. name's on the top of the list. You can be my guinea pig for the, for right. the start of the session. I look forward to it. Cool. Okay. Sorry. Well, the day's going very well. I, I was um, the guinea pig. I had mine first. Tim Mendham is in line to get his flu jab. Yes, yes. <laughs> I am. I'm extremely nervous, but I'll be fine. I think, I think I'll, I'll survive. Well, Dr. Brad's very good at it. What's... <laughs> Dr. Brad's very good. In fact, someone just had their. We we're a bit nervous about having the, the shot. They just had it, and they said, "Is that it?" You know. Yeah, I know, I know. So the, the, it's, you, you get over it, I think, pretty quickly. You do, but it's a great turn up. Uh, the room is full of people. I think they're all here for their muffins, quite frankly. But Dr. Brad's doing a great job. I'm catching up with uh, Lara here, who's uh, hoeing into her lovely uh, muffin, and she's. <laughs> Also, like like me, she's received a, a temporary tattoo. Yours says... Hug, Hug me, I've had the flu vaccine. Mine says, I'm a flu fighter. Yeah. And, uh, Which is ironic, because I think the flu fighters might be anti-vax. They might be. 
I may have made that up. Yeah, I seem to remember. Listeners will know. Uh, but it was what everybody's saying was entirely painless. Yeah. yeah honestly. I get it every year. I'm a teacher and the kids are filthy. And <laughs> no, uh, in all seriousness, though, it's obviously rife for picking things up at school. Things circulate uh, very, very quickly. So I always get the flu vaccine every single year. Yeah. And the, the day is going very well. It's been going for over an hour, about an hour now. And people are all still gathered here. In fact, everyone who's had their vaccination is still here. In fact, no one's really running out the door, which I think they're here for the muffins, quite frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was pretty good, I must yeah. say. Now I'm just walking outside again to the street. I'm standing outside the doctor's clinic. And the reason I'm here is because there was a call put out on Facebook couple of weeks ago for people to come here and picket this event to protest with banners and signs and make noise and whatever and I'm on the street now and there is not a soul there are cars whizzing by a few people here and there going about their business but the protesters must have all stayed home in bed maybe they've got the flu well, I must say the, the day is a terrific success. Lots of people here still waiting uh, to get their injection from Dr. Brad. We've had live views on Facebook, uh, on the, uh, the Australian Skeptics Facebook site, and people are now getting their temporary tattoos, which is a lot of fun. So from the Australian Skeptics vaccination, flu vaccination day, this is Richard signing off. Hi, I'm Darren McKee, one of the hosts of The Reality Check. Each week, my co-host and I explore a range of controversies and curiosities using science and critical thinking. You can find us on iTunes, your favorite podcasting platform, and on Facebook by searching for The Reality Check, or by following us on Twitter at TRC underscore podcast. Until then, keep an open mind, but not so open your brain falls out. Join us now for Drinking Skeptically in the Think Tank. Welcome to the 500th episode of The Skeptic Zone, a great moment in Australia up there with um, the death of Billy Schneddon and um, some other great things that happened that are really good. Federation. That were not good. So that was tragic. The death of Billy Schneddon was a tragic thing for Australia. But the 500th episode of The Skeptic Zone is a great thing for Australia. Stand up for Australia. Now sit down and welcome. Who have we got here today? Richard Saunders. Hello, Maynard. Thanks for coming along. Over there we've got... Iran Sego. And... Tim Mendham. Amanda Rose, Trish Han, Lara Bannum. And you're going to set us off with some great topics here. We're going to tell some stories, are we? Let's talk about the time that your car didn't start. That was an exciting moment, wasn't it? Now, long-time listeners will remember that we used to do a segment called The Think Tank where we'd come to our club at the end of the street and come downstairs to the Chinese restaurant, have Mm. a great Chinese food and then uh, dinner, and then sit on these long tables as part of the restaurant. We're in exactly the same spot. However, this club has completely changed. It's all meeting rooms now. But we've got comfortable chairs. It's quite nice. Yeah, yeah. It looks a bit Game of Thrones-ish. <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly right. I think it's a catering school there now, oddly mm. enough. Oh, 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 look, I have an apology. Um, Tim Ferguson. Um, a written apology from Tim Ferguson. Uh, Tim Ferguson of Doug Anthony All-Stars. He wished to apologise for not being here. And he says that he does agree that the earth is not flat, but he thinks the moon is flat because we only ever see one side. It could be two-dimensional. Aha, he said. The earth is definitely flat, Maynard. I don't know oh. what people are talking about. Now, there's, there's something we can kick off the Think Tank with. This is incredible, everybody. In all the years that I've been doing the Skeptic Zone and we used to do the Think Tank, this topic never came up because we thought, why on earth? Or, 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 on earth? Why on earth? <laughs> it never occurred to us. Now, Tim, you've been around a long time, the sceptical traps. <laughs> Flat Earth, it's really taken off. It has, hasn't it? Why? What's going on? I don't know, actually. It's just nice and even. It's just, you know, it's a simple thing to understand, right? A flat Earth, like a pancake, and people can appreciate that like they appreciate pancakes. 
I think it's really started. I think it really started in the U.S. with some prominent sports people. Like there was, uh, yeah. from, uh, uh, yeah, a, that, um, started with a basketball star who said something, and then. Oh uh, no, that was a bit late to the party. I'd look up the work of Mark Sargent um, online. He's been one of the main promoters of this with videos and things like that. He did a seven-part series. Anyone seen any of his videos? Uh, you're a tough crowd for that. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of interesting. And uh, Ono Ross and Carrie did an interview with Mark Sargent. So have a look at that. You may get a bit of background. But I don't think Mark Sargent alone. Yeah, no. I, I think he was also interviewed by um, by Marsh on um, on oh, yes. uh, on uh, be reasonable. Be reasonable, yeah. On be very reasonable in the case of Marsh. Um, <laughs> that's, one, that's one of the seven <laughs> episodes he's done. Yeah. Yeah. Be too reasonable. Um, the the thing is. Um, Sergeant by himself would in no way make it so popular. I think he just had a celebrity pick up on it and make it a lot more popular today than it's been in uh, decades. But, it, but it's not just popular. It's it's they have conventions and they just had one in the UK and even here in Australia. There's oh, been they, they tried to get one together. They tried, they yes, happen. yeah, they did. Oh. oh, but they have got fans all around the globe. Oh, <laughs> I, I haven't really looked into it, but. It's always been my impression that it was kind of an irony thing. Like, it's a, is it like a really <laughs> there is people a, genuinely mm. emotionally committed to the idea, or is it well, like an we, internet troll? Well, from what I gather, there's uh, there's the Christian angle as well uh, that go back to the firmament above, and then there's also uh, the people who don't trust in what they're being told, and it's kind of like they've been looking for the grand unification uh, conspiracy theory of them all, and this would be it because if the Earth, Earth was indeed flat explains all the other ones does it yeah. <laughs> because, because that's the first thing they're hiding so it's conspiracies all the way down that sort of thing yeah Sp- speaking of space man and i just noticed what trish is wearing oh. trish would you like to tell how this is it's my um it's the australian research into space exploration t-shirt or, or arse <laughs> i don't know what's funny about that richard mm. You have a lot of uh, contact with school kids. Do they have anything about the flat Earth thing? Do they try yeah, that one? The teacher first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good point. <laughs> I hadn't, hadn't even got that far. You didn't want to reveal that. <laughs> well, as a school teacher, do your students go, "Hey, Earth's flat. Shut up." Uh, sort of. Um, so I've got a Year Twelve group at the moment who a lot of our com- conversations are centred around flat Earth, round Earth. Uh, they find a lot of memes and send them to me. Oh, um, oh, to be honest, right. it's it's it. The the physics that they have to understand to be able to explain why the Earth is not flat and in fact is a sphere, um, is entirely relevant to our course. So it, it seems like a complete joke, but they're actually learning stuff. Okay. Now, Maynard, I had a, a listener write in saying. He had an idea for the 500th episode. He said, don't do any more. No, that was another listener. <laughs> he said, why don't we look at some of the topics that were in the very first think tank? And I just listened to that uh, today, and that was with Dr. Rachie and uh, our reporter Michael Wallahan at the time. And the topics we covered 10 years ago, almost in this very spot, were the Lithgow Panther, Yowie's UFOs and Bunyips, Robbie Williams looking for aliens. Do you remember that? Yes. 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 Proper nutso. And ghosts. You remember that? Yeah. I wasn't a fan. Um, Now, now of course, that that job's been taken over by the guy from Blink-182. Has it? Okay. Oh, and Jim Corr. Um, Another topic, pink and Scientology. I don't know if that ever went anywhere or not. Uh, Halfway through the recording of the, 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 the session, and I don't think it's going to happen tonight, a nice young lady came up to us and gave us all free beers because the club were running a promotion. Yes, I know, right? That's all recorded. Um, we should, yeah. Uh, pan Pharmaceuticals. Remember 10 years ago Absolutely. the story? Pan Pharmaceuticals. Yeah. That, was, that was a wonderful experience, actually. Yeah. Uh, the, the, that, that was where they hadn't quite checked the ingredients properly and some tablets were coming out 100% and some 10%. That's right. and yeah. Yeah. There, there was a lot of uh, disparity. There was actually also a lot of floor sweepings, apparently, oh. being put back into the mix. Mm. Yes, but they were raided. Oh, the wow. pharma- a large yes. pharmaceutical company that was... Uh, making p- uh, pills and things for other companies as well. And they were raided and uh, put out of business and there was a huge court case about it and the guy who ran Pan Pharmaceuticals won a huge payout like against $50 million. The, yes. $50 million, it was something strange. enormous. So it was actually it pays to be a bad mm-hmm. manufacturer. So that was ten, uh, roughly 10 years ago. Also, the topics brought up in that uh, situation were witchcraft at a soccer match, oddly enough, 
and vegetarian diets. So and that were the, the topics we were looking at 10 years ago. Not even vegan, vegetarian. Yeah, just, just vegetarian oh. diets. So well, Cutting edge stuff. With you. That <laughs> was really... It was daring, I think it was. And, uh, but I think the best part was being interrupted to, to, to have free beers, quite frankly. So coming up in... in um, Come, come to my notice. The bus is leaving. The, the bus is leaving, yes. We all miss the bus announcements. Long-time listeners will remember we'd be recording and halfway through the, the club would say the bus is leaving for so-and-so location. Doesn't happen anymore, Maynard. It's very sad. But there is behind you a photo of the dog that single-handedly defeated the Kaiser in the First World War. <laughs> uh, we see a... a, a, a Single-footedly. Oh, yes, that's right. Look, look at that dog. That dog is just about to go the Kaiser. You can tell the Kaiser's just out of frame. Oh, the, no. <laughs> people wondering why they're it was just surrounded by war pictures, because this club is the uh, Returned and Services League club, which is was originally set up for ex- servicemen and women. So mm-hmm. there you go. There you go. So, but it brought to my attention just today or yesterday by Dr. Brad Mackay was John Edward is coming back to town. Yay. Some things never change. Yeah, you're right, because I, as I pointed out to Dr. Brad, this is his uh, this is his routine every year for 10 plus years. He comes in the middle of the year and does this pre-tour promotion, which basically means every media outlet will have him on, especially the chat shows and Anybody things like that. Anybody been to see him at all? Anyone been to see him? Seen a South Park episode huh? about him. <laughs> it wasn't complimentary. Yeah, I, he wasn't. I, 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 over 10 years ago, I went to see him f- do a live TV show called uh, Mornings with Carrie Ann Kennelly mm-hmm. at the time. And I got into the audience and I thought best thing to do is just see what goes on. I, I, if I stand up and try to shout, it wouldn't work. And he didn't do any readings at that time. But Carrie Ann asked him about something to do with his, his psychic powers can interfere with electronics. He said, oh, yeah, that's true. You know, TVs flicker on and off and I, I might... Powers in, and I thought, and they let him fly. <laughs> but but it was that uh, being in the audience after the show was over, and he went away, and and I was chatting to Kerry Ann Kenley, the, the 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 host of the show, and I said, look, I'm from the Skeptics, and we sort of we you know we're pretty sure we know what's going on. Would you have a skeptic on for balance? And she said yes, and that's why we got the magician Mark Meyer on about two weeks later or something on to put the skeptical point of view. So that, that worked out in the end. And, I, and again, if I would have stood up and said during a live taping of the show, I'd made a fool out of myself. It happens anyway, Maynard. But mm. I think that was the best outcome. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, has anyone ever been to like that? I mean, not Mark, John Edwards, but anyone else? Have you anyone had a chance to see one do a massive cold reading, which is what they turn into, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I used to see... Um, <coughs> we used to have a fellow who challenged us a long time ago named... Cliff Dorian. He was channeling a oh. an ancient spirit or something, putting on a slightly different voice. Not, <laughs> not very good. But his his shtick was that he would dribble at the same time. But he would go read people, and he read um, he read the, some of the skeptics were there, and he, he sort of uh, contacted our dead relatives, half of whom weren't. But never mind. So that was quite fun actually. And he then challenged us to uh, hundred thousand dollars, and he offered his own hundred thousand oh. dollars. And he supposedly brought it on and showed it on TV. And it was uh, quite interesting. Barry yeah. Williams was uh, there with him, actually. Was, this the, was he bald or was this another guy I'm thinking yeah, about? He had a beard, though. Yeah, I think he was balding, yeah. yeah. Bald and a beard, OK. Yeah. James I, Randi. I, I, saw, <laughs> I saw a, a female um, reader, but it was not even called reading. It was just all just basic mentalism tricks. Even she was so terrible that even at the time, I mean, now I know a lot more about how these things are done. At the time... I didn't, and he was still very transparent that what she was doing were tricks. It was, it was really quite bad. Just trying to remember what her name was. Yeah, the only one I've seen that was in the studio audience of Richard's television show um, when he was judging the psychics. Yes. And, uh, yeah, they weren't very good either. Yes, good, good, because you'd end up doing two seasons of the show. What was it called? The One, the was one. it? Yeah, two seasons. There's a lot, a lot of things that ended up on the yeah. editing room floor. There was a second season called The Two. <laughs> I've been called worse what we'll do now is we'll take a, a quick break and we'll play some of the um, the very kind and, and wonderful greetings and, and well wishing uh, messages of well wishing well wishing yes, yes, yes. I can't if, I need another drink and I've only been drinking water and stuff we're going to play some greetings from around the world congratulations Skeptic Zone We here at Squaring the Strange wish you hearty congratulations on your milestone 500th episode. 
Richard Saunders has now entered epic territory as a podcasting legend. Hey, we love legends. We should do a whole show on Richard. So from me, Pasquale Romero. And Ben Radford. And Celestia Ward. All of us here in strange studios in the southwest deserts of New Mexico, kind of like the outback of the United States, wish you a fantastic 500th and many more. Boy, howdy, George Rob here from the Geologic Podcast. Just wanted to say congratulations on 500 wonderful episodes of The Skeptic Soup. That's not the name. What? That's not the name. Oh, sorry. 500 episodes of The Skeptic Place. Nuh-uh. Oh, the, uh, the Skeptic Party Guys? Nope. Uh, the Skeptic, Skeptic, Skeptic Thing? Not even close. Something... Bone something? Closer. Skeptic bone. That's it. The skeptic bone. No. Uh, the skeptic Vegemite party and dingo fiesta? Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Let me start again. <clears throat> Boy, howdy. George Robb here. Just wanted to say congratulations on 500 wonderful episodes of the skeptic Vegemite party and dingo fiesta. Richard, you've really come quite a long way from those very first episodes where you were accidentally recording into your toaster. Uh, do they say toaster in Australia? No. What, what do they say? Ready flame box. Really? I don't know. Oh. Skeptic zone. What? Skeptic zone. That's it. What was I thinking? Anyway, congratulations to everyone involved in producing all of the consistently wonderful content that makes up each and every one of the 500 episodes of The Skeptic Zone. I don't think that's it. Huzzah and pip pip to you, Richard, and to all of your amazing cohorts. Except Maynard. He knows why. Eh, I'm just kidding. I know now that that could have happened to anyone's llama. Regardless, here's to the next 500. Yay! Hi, Richard. It's Heidi Robertson, the raw skeptic. 500 episodes. Do you feel old? Worn out? Try some healing crystal energy chakra infusing Reiki with a side of homeopathic cynicism burned moxibustion style on meridian piercing acupuncture pressure points. Your yeti spirit animal will be forever grateful. Alternatively, run downstairs and have a cup of tea and a peanut butter sandwich which will do just as well and cost you a fraction of the price. You're welcome. Congratulations, and thank you for all you do for the skeptical community. Hello, Richard. Susan Gerbeck from the Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia Project. Congratulations on 500 shows. Thank you for all your support and your friendship. I've learned so much from you, and I know I have a lot more to learn from you. According to my psychic, she sees another 500 episodes sometime in 2027, and she's never wrong. Hi, good day, Dr. Richard. This is Dr. Carl. Congratulations on getting to 500 podcasts. What a wonderful thing. You are bringing skepticism to the universe. You are doing God's work. If there is a God, then that means that you're doing the work of nobody or you're doing the work of everybody. Oh, God, you're doing the work of the universe. Please love one Bye. Well, wasn't that nice to have some of those people uh, send uh, messages to the Skeptic Zone? I thought they were fantastic, actually, mm -hmm. especially the second one. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> 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 but actually, uh, when did you pick up on the Skeptic Zone? When did you first hear it? Uh, I think it was probably about five years ago um, when I went to my first Skeptics Convention in Melbourne. And I'd only recently been, I'd recently found out what skepticism was and I'd started listening to Skeptics Guide. And then you, Maynard, accosted me at the Friday evening event and just terrified me. Yes. It terrified me. And I couldn't even speak to you for about three or four years. So, and here we are. <laughs> that, was, that was a Planet Maynard meet and greet. And, uh, and, and, and the guy with the beard came along as well, too, didn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah. Different evening. Oh, different evening. Yeah, okay. this was the Friday right. night, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty big night, as they usually are in Melbourne there. And that was when it was held in an underground uh, uh, abandoned uh, nuclear silo as well in Melbourne too, uh, at, at, at the University of Melbourne, I remember. The, big, the huge concrete bunker underground there. Yeah. You'd think I'd remember that, but never mind. Oh, okay. oh, it just looks like every other lecture theatre you've ever been in. But to someone who's never been in a lecture theatre, it looked like a nuclear bunker underground there. Yeah, would you encounter the sceptic zone first? 
I'm trying to remember what year it was, but it was the QED that you were at, Iran. Yeah, and it was the same QED about where I, about three years ago, so not that long ago. Um, and yeah, the same year that I met Dr. Brad Mackay for the yeah, first I time and there as well. yeah. went clubbing until about four in the morning. Yeah, um, <laughs> and then he recommended, he said, Oh, um, listen to the Skeptic Zone. And I was like, Oh, what's that? I'll add that to my list of podcasts. And there we go, we've been listening to it ever since. Mind you, he said that, that when he was 4 a.m. peeking on the dance floor, You've got to listen to the Skeptic Zone. I love you. Yeah. I think that's what he said. Yeah. And then I was like, Well, obviously, I have to move to the home of the Skeptic Zone. So I packed all my stuff up, and here I am. And Amanda, when, well, you, you, you go way I'm back way with the back. show, don't you? Yeah, I don't think I was on the first one, but I was Not on the, the first first Earliest, some of the early ones, yes. Oh, okay. no, Do you I'm remember happy. any of the topics that you tackled? No, nothing. I can't remember a single <laughs> thing. Yes. I remember. About but that's why, because there was free beers all the time back then, wasn't there? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> no, I remember we did a think tank once, Amanda, and you tell us about how you were, uh, you had an optical illusion, you were on the train, and you're looking out the window, and a plane was coming. That's right. And you it remember was like that? going backwards. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah, and, and, and you, um, you couldn't decide which direction the plane was going. That's yeah, that right. And it kind of looked UFO-ish if yeah, you sort of yeah. couldn't quite see the the um, wings and it was just sort of hovering there in the... Yeah, I remember. Oh, the was it like that scene from Flying High where it's coming right for us and you ran and jumped out of the train window or anything like that? Lloyd Bridges did in Flying High? No. Because <laughs> that's just stupid. Who would say that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we might take another uh, a quick break again and listen to some more uh, greetings from around the world. See if ones, see which ones you can see are under coercion when you have a listen to it or not. <laughs> Hey, this goes out to Richard Saunders and all of our friends and the Australian skeptics. Hey, Richard, congratulations on reaching the Skeptic Zone episode 500. Nice. Woohoo! Five congratulations, congratulations, Richard. Amazing. Way to go, guys. Well done, yeah. my friend. Keep it up, 500 more. Yeah, Richard, we all know how much work and dedication it takes to put out that kind of output for that long. So really, well done, my friend. Yeah, we love you, brother. Keep up the great work. Richard, I want to congratulate you on the 500th episode of The Skeptic Zone. But I can't do it without putting things in a bit of context. When you invited me to join the Australian Skeptics Committee in 2003, you were already an old hand. You were president of Australian Skeptics Inc. at the time, you had recently finished creating the Great Skeptic CD, and you were about to start Sydney Skeptics in the pub, which is still, all these years later, still going strong. While the podcast was just a twinkle in your eye at that time, you had already produced skeptical video and audio content of what somewhat similar nature. Yet even with all that in mind, the Skeptic Zone must be considered a special achievement. Doing anything for 500 consecutive weeks is incredible. Uh, I mean, personally, I'd probably expect a ticker tape parade for taking the garbage out 500 weeks in a row. Yet, through thick and thin, happiness and adversity, you have persisted. You've also given a voice to others who you call reporters. Dr. Aichi, Heidi, Mandy, Joe and Joe, and of course the one and only Maynard, and many others. Being one of those voices... I truly appreciate having a platform that allows me to contribute occasionally, and I most certainly appreciate the fact that you keep it going. So, Richard, congratulations on the amazing milestone, and all the best for the next 500. Hello, Richard. Congratulations on episode 500. This is Cassandra. You guys know me as Dr. Cassandra Perryman of the Cast Files and president of Brisbane Skeptic Society. I'd like to say that when I was a kid, Richard was a personal hero of mine, not because for his skepticism, but because of his origami. So I love to say that origami led me to skepticism. And it was Richard who, well, led me to both. So thank you and congratulations again on episode 500. 500 episodes of The Skeptic Zone. I don't believe it. Well done, Richard. Looking forward to the next 500 of Busting Woo across Australia and around the world. Hi, Richard. Hi, Richard. Hey, Richard. We hear that you're coming up on your 500th episode. Woo! And here is for another 500. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> so we would like to congratulate you on doing so many. We do know at the ESP that that is a hell of a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. And it's something, I mean, we've been listening, all of us, to the Skeptic Zone for ages. And I think it's almost now 10 years. What? You inspired us so much. You are one of the reasons why we started this in the first place. Thank you very much for doing it. You're amazing. Keep doing what you do. 
And this was from all of us at the ESP. The real ESP experience. Goodbye. Bye, Richard. <laughs> Bye. <Baka> -baka. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you can believe. We now rejoin the think tank, also known as the drunk tank, already in progress. And a, a shocking piece of news that the first episode could have been wrong of the Skeptic Zone. Well, yeah, it turns out Pink never joined Scientology, so oh. that was... That was Nonsense, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I don't. I think it was just at the time th there was a report of it, so it was very new. So we, we weren't sure what was happening. But I'm glad she didn't. She got dumped. She got dumped, and apparently they thought she became a Scientologist. But no, oh. she's not that stupid. Oh. So uh, ten years later, we find these things out. Truth will out. Wait, Wait, so, so that was wrong. Now what about the Penrith? <laughs> but the pa but surely Panther. the Penrith Panther really was. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Actually, yeah. Well, yeah well, I caught one the other week. It's in my backyard. Look, I, I actually did a story on uh, a big cat sighting in the Upper Hunter. You did? Um, yes. a, a, a fellow came forward called Lee Harvey. So if you look up Lee Harvey, ABC Newcastle or ABC Upper Hunter, um, there'll be an audio interview with him, and he's claiming he saw one around the Musselbrook area. Now, there's never been any large cat sightings in that area. It's not actually linked particularly well with with where you could walk up there in a corridor, even if you if there was one. Um, so I was a bit sceptical, shall we say, of the whole thing, and I actually rang the local councils, and all of them said they'd, they've never had alien big cats, as they're called in the UK, sightings in the Upper Hunter. It just doesn't happen there all that often. Was he the one who saw there was some, some cubs or some... This cat was coming up over a hill or something, there was a, a shed of some sort? Uh, yeah, there was a shed involved. I don't know if he saw any more than one, but and I did quiz him. I'm saying, are you sure? And, uh, yeah, so have a look at yeah, Lee Harvey, ABC Upper Hunter Maynard, and you'll see the cat thing. Yeah. We actually did also publish that in the Skeptic magazine. Oh, right. Now, is that searchable? It is absolutely searchable. It's the same issue as uh, we talk about some yowies and that sort of stuff, or big cats uh, in various places, actually. So, yeah, that's a bit of a big cat issue. Actually, so yeah, look it up in the. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was good. Mm. That, that sounded real to me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and now, getting back to the world of the paranormal, we never stray far from that. Uh, just letting Sydney listeners know, especially, that uh, Paracon, Australia's uh, paranormal uh, convention, will be at the Manly Quarantine Station this year, uh, June the 16th and the 17th, with special guest Sharon Hill. Skeptical Sharon Hill. Uh, I won't be there, unfortunately. I'll be in in the United States, but uh, hopefully, Maynard, yeah, you I'm, might. Be I'm hoping to attend. So, if you see me there and you've got something to say of a skeptical or non-skeptical nature, I'll certainly want to hear all about it, and I'll be interested to see how uh, Sharon's show goes over. Yeah. So, if you want to go along, folks, it, it, look. I always say this: it's worthwhile for skeptics to go to Mind Body Wallet. It's worthwhile to go to paranormal conventions, sit in the audience, and learn. It's really worthwhile. Don't you? You've been to a few with me. Yeah, look, I went to a couple of mind body, body wallets with you. Um, the one we did for Dirty Disbelievers 9, where you uh, uh, got called the C word, and it wasn't clever. Uh, by <laughs> by some guy um, uh, who was doing something with power bands or something yes, yes. that 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 could have got potentially rough. In fact, has there ever been any ever got any hopper bumpo going on in the world of scepticism? Everyone had to, been put in a headlock. What happened? Oh well, so um, a few years back, I went along to a Sully Morgan, the psychic oh, show, yeah, right. and I had a hidden camera. Someone else had a hidden camera, and we actually filmed a sceptic who was, he was leafleting outside, telling people what to look for in cold reading. And he got chased into the road by Sally Morgan's husband and threatened, you know, threatened his life. So, yeah, they're yeah. not all lovely and airy-fairy. Oh, there's some very savoury language, some very Northern England language coming out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely, I was so offended. <laughs> that, that was the husband that she wasn't supposed to be working with anymore. That was the husband that was distanced from her enterprise entirely. Yeah, funny you should say that. And someone was asking for a video of actually him at mm. at one of her presentations actually mm. just to prove that uh it there wasn't quite as uh, as it was portrayed. Yeah. Well, actually, the UK sceptics do that kind of thing where they go along and expose people. Would would the Australian sceptics do that? I know you're considered the rock stars of the sceptics, <laughs> yeah. as, as yeah. someone said the yeah. other yeah. other yeah. yeah. Uh, there's well, yes and no. The thing about the UK, the different laws. We can't have hidden cameras and hidden microphones here. You can't record somebody or video them without their permission. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've made a lot of hay out of that. <laughs> so, no, but no, it wasn't so long ago you could. And, in fact, one of the, the previous committee members of the Australian Skeptics here in New South Wales, uh, Alinda, who is, uh, now lives in the UK, years ago, a current affair, or today, tonight, I can't remember, one of these tabloid shows, 
hooked her up with a hidden camera and she went to have her boobs expanded using hypnosis. Sure. <laughs> and the lady said that she could hypnotize Alinda's stem cells to make her breast, her bust size bigger. So that was a, an undercover report. Oh. Wow. oh, That's a hell of a claim. Yes. And it didn't work, apparently. So she tells us. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there an area of new woo that's come up that and no one really expected? We're obviously talking about the flat earth. That's, an, that's a return of an oldie but a goodie. Is there anyone that's come up that's new? You've gone, well, I didn't think I know. Well, there's always new health claims. that yeah. are always absolutely shocking. And, but they usually have a basis in something which does work. So, you know, you have your high-dose vitamin C, which has been proven to be useful for things like sepsis. Not much good for HIV, though. Not much good for chronic Lyme, which isn't a thing. So there's things like that which are coming around all the time. So, yeah, there's always new medical... Yeah, so they, what, what they do very often is so when you hear a new claim, usually it is based on an old claim, just you know just revamped a little bit or it's based on something that is actually scientific by using the same words but that's just, just the words not not anything else it's just you know sounds like it's the same but in reality it means something completely different and in fact usually it doesn't mean anything what, what's new are the customers because new generations of customers come along uh, and I, I, I just had a thought that we were chatting before uh, over uh, lots of chips and, and dinners and things. And uh, Amanda told us that, that she's been working for a show we all admire called The Checkout. Now, that must have been interesting because they do tackle a lot of wool, as, uh, woo, wool, maybe wool too. Woo, especially homeopathy, they're quite, uh, they, they make some quite strong, funny comments on. Yeah, you've also, also got the advantage of a fully fledged legal department to check stuff for you too. Uh, right. Does that delay things going to air very often? Uh, no, most of the, I mean, it gets very much checked in the research phase, so hopefully what we come up with behind the scenes is not actionable, but of course it does go through the ABC legal, and occasionally they do request sort of wording changes, or can you back up this, what's your evidence for this, and we can go back and say, well, bang, 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 and they go, okay, that's fine, we're not going to get sued. Uh, but sometimes... Um, the show has been sued, although uh, those haven't been successful, and they're more sort of publicity stunts. <laughs> they, they can, the company gets the um, publicity to say, "Well, we sued," and then they drop the suit. But they, in the meantime, they got all the media to say that they uh, sued. But yeah, but, but Julian and Craig made made quite a lot of noise around Swiss dropping their. Yeah. their claim so it's not like it's not one sided oh no it's absolutely not one sided yeah. but perhaps the people that Swiss is um, targeting aren't also really following the, what yeah. the checkout does you know they're absolutely. only getting the one media release also a bit, a bit with the checkout too like uh, it kind of writes itself in the, you open the paper and see what's going on you go oh yeah that's kind of an obvious thing yeah and a lot of um, uh, the ideas come from the viewers, so tip off at thecheckout.tv, yeah. send in your ideas and uh, might get to air. Actually, what's been the favourite one you've done, so favourite segment you've worked on so far? Um, for me, as a researcher, I think it was the MSG segment that we did this year. Uh, that was just really fascinating for me to research. It was quite a different sort of thing, so I was going back through the New York Times archives to, you know, 1968 when this, the first... Um, idea about MSG causing physical effects came up and like plotting exactly how from one sort of speculative letter in a medical journal how and why this sort of myth kind of grew about MSG being really harmful um, so I think that's probably my favourite and they're all on YouTube so you can go to the checkout and yes. catch up and in fact who's a big fan Michael uh, Marshall from the UK huge fan of the checkout I, I post some clips occasionally of homeopathy or whatever, and he writes back to me. He said, "Now, now, I've last last twenty hours, I've been watching nothing but the checkout." Yeah, so well, it's quite good. Uh, Marsh was the host of the panel that we had in the 2014 convention, mm, which included mm. the checkout of course, yeah. and uh, the A Triple C and uh, Choice. So he he actually was uh, uh, was the moderator of that panel. So he's in preparation. He did a lot of. A lot of watching of the checkout. Yes, I think yeah. that's when he became a real fan. Yeah, no, no. It's, well, it's look, and shock, Michael, Michael Marshall here does, does not care for Doctor Who or Breaking Bad. 
Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. I know. I'm shocked. You'd think between those two you'd get something, wouldn't you? But no. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm horrified to hear that, actually. Mm. I'll, 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 I'll wipe him from my address book now. <laughs> he, he's a big fan of David Icke, though. <laughs> oh yes, he, he sat he through what was it, hours. seventeen hours of it, or something like that. But it was kind of annoying because he had more people than QED, didn't he, or something? Oh yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. David Icke knows how to get the audiences in. Everyone likes his tracksuits. Oh right. Mm. Um, can I? Can I, uh, I want to ask a question. It's like you know, this has been about ten years. I'm just wondering, ten years ago, we talked about the Penrith Panther here. What would what would have been the prominent woo in in the UK? You both, you were both there at the time. <laughs> Yeah, but I was still, I was on the other side 10 years ago. 10 oh, years ago us. in England. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you were throwing the white sheet over your head and going, ooh, in, in old stately manners, were you? <laughs> not, not quite. Oh. Uh, no, but I, I think at some point I started watching The X-Files and just got very obsessed with all the paranormal stuff. And it's only when, since I've been in Australia... Um, and started listening to Skeptic's Guide and that, that I completely did a U-turn in a very short space of time. So 10 years ago in England, I would have still been reading stuff to do with UFOs and ghosts and everything like that. Oh, so you've gone from being David Duchovny to Julian Anderson? Yes, I have, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, pregnant with an alien. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> well, I mean, 10 years ago... There was a lot of local woo where I was living 10 years ago. So I was living down in um, a, a, a naval city down in the south of England. And um, there were lots of old buildings and lots of woo around that way. But, it was, yeah, there wasn't anything particularly momentous going on, I don't think. There was the lot usual, of navel gazing. Just lots of navel gazing, oh. yeah. Although I can tell you one story from approximately 10 years ago of a big cat sighting. Um, it was by the side of a big motorway near where I used to drive past for work, and this big cat was seen lying in the grass. So, of course, immediately what they do is they get someone from our local zoo to come out with a helicopter. And as the helicopter comes down over the big cat, it then tumbles down the hill because it's actually a giant stuffed toy that was from a local <laughs> <laughs> toy shop <laughs> so that's the only big cat sighting that I can say I've ever seen about I think it's, it's an interesting thing actually when you look back at the, the, the sceptics and how most people way back when did start off sort of believing something actually it's often a, a thing you, you, uh, my thing was Bermuda Triangle uh, way back when and uh, I think and Von Daniken appears all the time actually I've spoken to so many sceptics who yeah. say way back when they used to sort of find Von Daniken and of course he's confusing. back with ancient aliens and uh, and Thetharkis with his hair they're great they're, and look they've done 10 seasons of that show like, uh, like well, yeah something like that I mean they're up uh, probably they're probably bigger than Mythbusters in many ways yeah, I, I well, know. Because yeah, well, they've done many and they've, their productions are probably cheaper to make. They've probably made more money than Mythbusters. What show are we talking about? Uh, Ancient, Ancient Aliens, Aliens is probably a better money making proposition than Mythbusters, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something that's happened too. Of course, Mythbusters has come and gone in 10 years. Yes, you're right. Things have come and gone since we've been doing the yeah, skeptics. I mean, it, was, it was probably on air before. My sanity for a start. Yeah, Mythbusters was probably on air before 10 years ago, but it's certainly gone now. Yeah, it was. It was on before, before but uh, oh, yeah, it's still going. You're right. Different hosts. Yes, yes. Oh. Oh, well. There's not many sceptical programs, though, are there, really? I mean, unfortunately. But the thing is, it's a foregone conclusion. <laughs> That's like, you know, Steve Novella spoke about this, how... You know, every time um, he or others try to pitch uh, to producers a sceptical show, they okay, so they discuss how we'll do the investigation and all of that, and they say, okay, but at the end you will leave the possibility of ghosts yes. or alien or whatever. You leave it open, right? And say, yeah. well, whatever, whatever conclusion we reach, and the producers don't want to hear of it because it's not. You know, it's not that interesting to... They, they see it as not that interesting to the audience. Well, there's a Cosmos back with Tyson Hall. He's coming back for it, yes. Yes, sure. he is. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, Cosmos, Cosmos the, 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 that, that got up again. Yeah. But there's another series with uh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, yes. They're making another series. They're also making In Search Of again. No. Yes. Don't you know they're yes. making with the guy who plays the Spock in the new yes. so Star are Trek? Bringing in for Zachary the new season? Levy. Zachary, Levy, no. Zachary, Levy. Uh, Harry Quinto. Uh, yeah. Your thing. Yeah. Who's well, yeah. You know. 
Yeah. Oh, Zachary Quinter. 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 Yeah. Yes, you see, he's sort of the one who played Spock, Spock. in um, in the Star Trek well, movies. He's doing a search of. He's, he's, yeah, they're going to yeah, search of. And I got a feeling that it's going to be more ancient aliens than Mythbusters. No, he I said think. it was going to be very scientific. Actually, he said they're going to take a very sceptical <laughs> approach <laughs> to these things and then oh, find that ghosts are real. That's what he said. Yes. <laughs> and a good way to kill off a program straight away. If if listeners haven't seen In Search of, it's most of it's on YouTube. Please watch the Bigfoot one. It's hilarious. I saw one episode. Um, and I couldn't. I, couldn't. I just like that. That was it. Like, oh, I used to watch it every Sunday. It was fantastic, you know. <laughs> it was it big it's, in UK too. No, it sounds like it's something I need to check out. Oh, in search of oh, with, with Leonard, Leonard Nimoy. Nimoy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. great it stuff. Had, it had all the drama of My Kitchen Rules <laughs> without the science. <laughs> <laughs> or an oven. <laughs> or discipline. Um, and also, if you've got a chance, check out um, the actual follow-up movie to uh, uh, Chariots of the Gods, question mark, was done by William Shatner. He did one about yes. ancient gods or something like that, and he's walking around in it, and he's a bit of a sceptic these days, uh, so he must have been on pills back then, and frankly, who can blame him? Have you seen his toupee? <laughs> Many times. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, are you a bit annoyed the whole ancient alien things come back again? Because when you would have gotten involved in the, in the sceptic movement back then, in ten, year, ten years ago, the ancient alien things wasn't a go at all, was it? No, I don't remember hearing about it ten years ago. Twenty years ago, but not yeah. ten years ago. I think the thing you realise is, is they're all cyclical. You know, they, they come and they go. I mean, psychic surgery has probably got a, a, an opportunity to come back now. I haven't seen it, but I can't see any reason why it won't. And they, they come and they go, these classic topics like Flat Earth, like Yowie's, like you know, Loch Ness Monster hasn't had a big run lately. I think it's about time. Um, yeah, you know, UFOs, they come and go a bit. Um, and I think all of these things are very cyclical. People get bored with the latest one and they go back to, you know, sort of classic Coke version of, of Woo mm. and they just pick it up. So, I'm, yeah, I think it's fun. Well, one of the criticisms I often hear uh, aimed at sceptics is that, oh, you pick on consumer fraud and that sort of thing. Why don't you go for the big ones like Islam, the Catholic Church and stuff like that? Yes, yeah, Marty. Because Islam is not a claim. I mean, we could go after specific claims, but what you can't, what what do you go after? Like, well, well, the Catholics have got the whole transubstantiation thing. Yeah, but okay. So, but let's assume that we, you know, grab some samples from some from of the wafer inside somebody's mouth while they're supposedly it's becoming Jesus uh, flesh. What then? So that, that will prove that that one specific instance, it didn't actually transubstantiate. It's, I, I just don't think it's worth spending so much time. There are other groups, Maynard, who are better equipped to take all these topics than we are. Then we can concentrate on the classic woo and consumerism and homeopathy and all the things that we, uh, we seem to excel at. Is there an area you reckon that uh, could be a, a done in the future that you think hey, we should get onto that? Hey? No? <laughs> Psychics. I want to know if the girl from Aqua really is dead and was replaced by her twin. Oh, that's that's a 21st century McCartney. This <laughs> Paul is dead thing. That's pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I think, having seen the Venger boys, oh, okay. that that is highly likely. Well, also, you'll notice that after Aqua did the, the soundtrack from Sliding Doors, they went on a very melancholy turn, and I think that's around about the point that the twin was replaced. Wow. Sorry, I can't. Thank you, Trish. <laughs> I can't maintain what was the big aqua head? What was the oh, Barbie, Barbie girl? Barbie girl. Oh, I actually yeah. saw them. That was the girl with a very really squeaky voice. Yeah. Yes. It was Dr. Yeah. Jones. Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones. Yeah. See, there you go. I oh, know the lesser yeah. known. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, is it an area you think you should get into, or you can't really tell us because it's coming up on uh, upcoming episodes of the checkout? <laughs> Anything skeptics should be looking at? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. There you go. Now, well, it was a considered no. It's just not, not like me. I go, no, and I've got no idea what I'm saying. I think, look at the dog. Look at the dog, yeah. What I think we'll do is we'll play the last of the, uh, the, the messages we've had from around the world, and we'll come back to wrap up the think tank. And see how many of these were recorded in a small concrete building deep underground. Hi, Richard. Joe Benamou here. Nearly 10 years ago, I appeared on The Zone as a reporter discussing a letter on homeopathy in the London Journal of Medicine from 1851. Suffice to say, I think this told us that there'll be a need for sceptical activists long into the future, and thus I see the sceptic zone reaching 5,000 episodes one day. I miss doing the think tank with you, Dr. Rachie, and Iran, which are always a scream. 
Thank you for providing a wonderful sceptical podcast and congratulations on reaching this little milestone of longevity. Richard Saunders. Jeez, we've been doing this for a long time, haven't we? I know skepticality hasn't been going as often as it used to. That'll change soon. So I'm not going to catch up to you anytime soon, but I can't wait to see you again. I have to have you come back to DragonCon. When the first time you came, I think you were Skeptic Tank still. And then the next time you came, you were Skeptic Zone. So congrats on all the shows. Many more to come. See you soon, Richard. Hi, this is Mike, Alice, and Marsh from the Skeptics with a K podcast. We just want to say congratulations to the Skeptic Zone. 500 shows. That's like 20 years of us doing we're shows. We're never going to yeah, get to 500 we're not shows. Get there. We we're never, not going to get there. Never, ever will. One of us will die first. I mean, we've just <laughs> we've literally just finished recording uh, a, an hour and a half long show, mm. which is mostly just you, Marsh, rambling on. It was it mostly was me. It became more and more me because I had the, uh, the notes of what we were doing and Alice got bored. <laughs> <laughs> All the way through, as is normally the case. But no one gets bored listening to The Skeptic Zone. They never do. It's a brilliant, brilliant show. Congratulations to uh, everyone involved. And I'll look forward to the next 500 episodes. 500 episodes ago, when Richard took the mic, he made a little podcast thing, which people seem to like. Now here we are much later, and The Skeptic Zone's still rocking. Congrats and thanks for having me. With love from Shelley Stocken. Hi, Mandy Noble. Diet Skeptic, here to congratulate Richard on recording 500 episodes of the Skeptic Zone podcast. Thank you, Richard, for providing this great platform for science, fun and critical thinking. And this weekend, Richard, when you run down the stairs to see what is to eat in the kitchen, I hope you find a really big Skeptic Zone cake to celebrate. Hello, Skeptic Zone listeners, and hello, Richard. It's Joe Alabaster here, offering my heartiest congratulations on episode 500. Now, listeners, I've seen the amount of work that Richard goes to for each episode of the show, keeping on top of what's going on in sceptical news, attending events, finding so many people to interview, editing the show, promoting the show, and to know that he's now done this 500 times is absolutely mind-blowing. Well, there's another thing that he does related to the zone that I'd like to mention quickly. For those of us who've worked with him on the show, he's given us opportunities to learn and refine new skills such as reporting, enunciating, editing and interviewing, and to meet some fantastic people. And that's you, dear listeners. To have some interesting experiences attending psychic expos and mind body wallet festivals, and to make some friendships and have a lot of laughs. So for that, and for bringing us a podcast of frankly fantastic quality week after week, thank you, Richard, and congratulations again. When I heard that the Skeptic Zone had a big milestone episode coming up, I assumed it was a strong number, something like seven or eight hundred, as host Richard Saunders is so much older than me, and I'm only into the six hundreds. But when I heard that his milestone was only to celebrate a round number, not a large one, I said, oh, how quaint. So I do want to wish the Skeptic Zone a charming and adorable little 500, a number that most of the leading podcasts passed years ago. Richard had called me not long ago to express his misgivings at not having been able to be competitively productive. I told him 500 is a good start and a number to be proud of, not bashful about. I want to be encouraging and say, stick with it. That number will only climb from here. And all of us up on the top shelf will keep a seat open for you and look forward to that day when your milestones are real and not merely symbolic. I'm Brian Dunning from Skeptoid.com. Ah, so Richard, the future, the now, the time. I'm, you must be giddy with excitement. Yes, I can't <laughs> wait, me not. No, I, I don't know. I mean, next week will be episode 501. That's all I'm thinking about right now. Well, of course, everyone's wanting to know. Uh, the Skeptical Cats, there's been uh, two pairs of Skeptical Cats over, yeah. the, over the 10 years, and uh, the new ones are following in the old ones' footsteps. Oh, paw prints, whatever they do, whatever cats they do. They do more. Yeah. They do more. They actually try to help edit the show by limping up on my computer and sometimes typing in very strange things like, oh, 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 I, I, oh, oh, oh. That explains it. 
It explains your emails. It explains this. <laughs> yeah, well, the old sceptical cats were more like producers. They sort of did fact-checking and stuff like that in yeah, the they, background. They, yeah. they, they were behind the glass yeah. panel, that's right. Mm. Uh, no, the show goes on. Um, as always, sometimes... I, I, as always, sometimes. Sometimes I don't know what's coming up next, but things usually come along. You've done a lot of work over the years. Thank you very much, Maynard, for all your work, of course. Well, it's interesting because you just kind of turn up and a lot of people have heard of the Skeptic Zone and it, it, it's usually a bit of an, an intro to what's going on. Then, of course, when they find out what I'm on about, I, I'm just waved off. <laughs> find out what you're on. Yeah, <laughs> we, really but thanks everyone for coming on. It's been great to do a think tank again. It's been years since we've done a proper think tank mm. in the, our club at the end of the street. No bus announcements. What a what a shame. And maybe we can do one again be, uh, in the not too distant future. That would be really cool. Well done, well done. We've done 500 programs. Thank you. Yay. I was and as we used to do, and we used to sign off. Yeah. Uh, thanks. <laughs>this is Dr. Pamela Gay from Astronomy Cast. Each week, Fraser Kane and I take our listeners on a fact-based journey through the cosmos. With our weekly podcast, we explain not just what we know, but how we know what we know about this universe that we share. Check us out at astronomycast.com and look for us in iTunes, Google Play, and wherever you download podcasts. See you online. Richard, I feel like a 500 episode <laughs> old man. That's it. We did it. We did 500. That was fi episode 500. Thank you to all the people who you heard uh, in today's episode and all those greetings. Weren't they nice from people oh, all around the world? Just fabulous to, to realise how much a little humble little podcast little in podcast. Sydney with just, humble little Richard you, just, just you, doing his thing every week you, for the last you and 500 I, episodes. You and I 10 years ago just in that little room and just, oh, oh well, let's do another podcast. I mean, we, we weren't even adolescents then. We, no, we, no, we were just, just we were pre preteen. We, we were. were. We nine, were very, very young. Very young. Yeah. <laughs> Very young, but ambitious, <laughs> ambitious, and, and full of beans. That's right. And uh, but how so much? And, and thank you to everyone who's yes, been thank you. listening and, and, and downloading every week for every, so long. And there are people who, of course, who have heard every episode. Whoa, wow! Wow! And and all the people who over the ten years have contributed financially to to support the Skeptic Zone. It's just yeah. me it's meant the show is re has reached five hundred. It, it keeps it going. Keeps yeah. It going. I mean, I, I would have contributed more, but I've actually had to buy about fifteen new iPhones over the last ten. <laughs> Years just to fit all the downloads of the podcast onto them. My, my memory's not big enough. So, uh, so yeah, besides that, I would be supported a lot more. But, oh, uh, well, never mind. I, I understand these things. <laughs> now, coming up on show 1000... Oh, no. No, no. I'm not going to th oh, <laughs> think that far one, into the future. Show. 1000. Good one, Richard. Good one. Well, when I think about it, I've been doing this show for a fifth of my life. Yeah, oh, that's amazing, oh, isn't it? That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. But you want to skip to show 1000? I mean, we yeah, could I do think that. next week we'll just say show 1000. <laughs> <laughs> now maybe 501. Let's 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 just start off a little you know step by step. I think 501 is probably a good idea. But for now, this is Richard Saunders and Stefan Soika signing off from Sydney, Australia. Hi, yeah, Maynard here. Wow. 500 years of the Skeptic Zone. Who would have thought? I remember the first time I was on the Skeptic Zone over... Well, no, actually, I don't remember it. I'm just making that up. But all the great times and laughs that Richard and I had. Um, there was that time we went to Aldi and we, we saw an orange. That, that was great. Uh, there was the time... Uh, we went to a laundromat and we did washing. That was that was pretty exciting. Um, um, I once told Richard he needed his wiper blades changed on his Camry. 
Oh, we laughed at that. <laughs> um, yep, just too many to think of. And there's all the people we met, uh, like uh, all the Brians we've met. That time you and I met Brian Cox and we tried to get him to say monkey, but he punched you. Oh, how we laughed. Brian Dunning. There was that time with Brian Dunning. Brian Dunning, you've been doing this for many years now. Do you think the world is getting more rational or we're getting more kooky? Oh, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think, I think I'm going to be in business a long, long time. What's the best rational way to see your path through in this odd world we live in, Brian? Be positive. Don't burn bridges. Don't get people mad at you. Don't annoy people. Don't go around being holier than thou and acting like you're the only one who's right and you're the only one who knows anything because you're not. Do you think Richard Dawkins suffers from that sometimes? Well, he's he's I mean this respectfully, but he's basically a sideshow. He's a, a an atheist activist. He's not out there trying to make friends. His work is really controversial and it sells. Look it up. Go online. Check a couple of sources. Go to a library. No, no, no. You should only listen to some podcaster and you should believe everything he tells you. Oh, yeah. Very emotional moment. Was it the time I talked to George Arab after that show thing? He said this. I, with an absolute dingo-eaten sense of joy. Hey, what do you like at the doctor? As a sceptical guy who believes in science and reason, you still must poop yourself when some tests are coming back. Something no. like that, completely irrational. My complete irrationality is sort of uh, providing myself a silent moment of hope before I open the envelope or before I answer the phone. So, you know, results are coming in. There is that one second of dread, hope, whatever, where you know that whatever you're feeling, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're wanting will not affect the ink, which is already printed on this page. This is a touch quantum. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Total, total, total Schrodinger. <laughs> Dr. Schrodinger. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Here's results. What are the results? Yeah. Right. It's just, it's not a cat. It's just, you know, fingers up your poop. He's certainly a deep guy. And that time I interviewed uh, Dr. Lisa Randall and uh, it didn't go so well. I hate you! I hate you more! Oh, we, we haven't got a clip for that. Sorry. But seriously. <laughs> The Skeptic Zone over the 500 years it's been on is just the premier science show that I listen to and I get all my information from it, which is why I'm not welcome at university. Good work, Richard. Long may you sail and all that sail in you. Remember that orange? <laughs> How we laughed. 